BioWare is one of, or at the very least, used to be one of my favorite game developers with both the Dragon Age and Mass Effect series being two of my favorite RPG franchises. The Mass Effect trilogy in particular is probably my favorite trilogy in all of gaming. After Andromeda released to underwhelming critical and fan response, the future of the series seemed uncertain. But with the release of the Legendary Edition and the announcement of Mass Effect 4, it looks like BioWare has no intention of letting the IP go to waste. The Legendary Edition remasters the trilogy, bringing some graphical enhancements as well as changes to the gameplay and tries to unify various elements across all three games. I will be doing individual videos for each game in the Legendary Edition as I want to review all three games as well as talk about the Legendary Edition as a whole. I played Mass Effect on PC for two playthroughs. This video will be mostly spoiler free due to many people playing the game for the first time thanks to the remasters, but I will talk about some of the basic setup and outline of the plot and some of the characters. The Mass Effect games have always looked good, thanks in no small part due to their very strong and distinct art styles, but Mass Effect 2 and 3 definitely have a different vibe than the first game. Those games have deeper colors with lots of strong lighting and shadows and they feel more gritty and dark as a result. But the first game has a pretty different feel to it. It's a lot brighter with colors that aren't quite as in your face and the world feels a lot cleaner. I guess the easiest way I could describe it is Mass Effect 2 and 3 feel more Blade Runner-esque, while Mass Effect 1 feels more like Star Trek. At least that's how I see it. The Legendary Edition makes the game look a lot better. I mean the first game still holds up surprisingly well, again thanks to its art style, but the remaster adds so many higher res textures and character models and improvements in lighting that it's hard to go back once you compare the two. A photo mode was added to all three games, though I never used it because photo modes don't really do much for me. The remaster changes the HUD, tweaking it to be more in line with the next two games. The character creator has also been changed to be more like ME3 and the game's audio was remixed, along with the slow of other changes. But even though the exterior code of the game has been changed, most of the bones of the experience remains the same for better or worse. There are lots of copy pasted locations in the game, but I'll talk about that in more detail during the gameplay section of this video. The voice acting is excellent all around, although there are plenty of characters who are voiced by the same actor. It's not as bad as say a Bethesda game, but it is noticeable. Some of the transitions from line to line can be awkward as well, but I guess that just comes with the territory of this style of dialogue system. Side note, the voice actors for Admiral Hackett and Captain Anderson both voiced characters in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, and one of those characters happens to be named General Shepard. I just thought that was kind of interesting. The game's score is fantastic and pretty distinct. I can remember a lot of the game's music off the top of my head, which isn't something I can say for a lot of games. There's just a lot of groove and synths mixed in with plenty of orchestral elements like strings and horns. Just like the game's visual style, the music does change a bit with the next games, and I do like it more in the sequels, but Mass Effect's music is still a bright spot. The sound design is pretty great. There are tons of memorable sound effects and touches from the menu sounds to the geth sounds, and the way different species' voices sound, like the multi-frequencies that Turians have. In terms in terms of performance, the game ran very well at 1440p 120 frames per second. It wasn't rock solid, but I also don't have a powerhouse of a machine. I did encounter a few glitches however, such as during one cutscene Shepard's character model was turned in the wrong direction, some cutscenes audio got out of sync with the character's lip movements, and one time all sound cut out during combat. But these are pretty minor glitches after around 50 or so hours of game time. The game takes place in a sci-fi universe where humanity discovered an alien beacon on Mars which fast forwarded our technology and allowed us to find a mass relay which connected us to other alien races and civilizations. You play as either a male or female Commander Shepard, a soldier with the Human Alliance. The Council is a group consisting of a representative of the three most prominent races in space. Humanity wants to obtain a seat on the Council and as such, Shepard has been voluntold to try and become a Spectre, which is a special elite soldier that works for the Council. After the tryout mission goes south, thanks to interference from another Spectre named Saren, Shepard has a vision from a Prothean beacon like the one found on Mars, which shows him devastation and destruction on a galactic scale. While attempting to gather evidence of Saren's betrayal, Shepard comes across information about the Reapers, which are supposedly an ancient race that wiped out the Protheans and who Saren is working for. After presenting the evidence to the Council, Shepard is granted Spectre status and tasked with taking down Saren and uncovering the truth of the Reaper threat. The setup for Mass 
Effect's story is fantastic, as is the story itself. Even though Mass Effect can be lacking in the gameplay department, which I'll get to, the story more than makes up for it, for the most part. The plot takes a few twists and turns with one of the best reveals I've ever come across in a game as to what exactly the Reapers are and what they want. It's also one of the best setups for a trilogy I've ever seen. But the reason why so many people care about the Mass Effect games isn't just for the plot. In fact, for a lot of people, including myself, it's the characters that really cemented the Mass Effect trilogy as one of the best in gaming. Tally, Garrus, Rex, Liara, Joker, Chakwas, Caden, Ashley, Anderson, these characters are present throughout the games provided none of them get killed and you choose to recruit them all. However, while Mass Effect 2 and 3 have a very big focus on your companions, the first game is not quite as character driven. Some characters are better than others here, which is admittedly true of all three games. As this is the first introduction to the Mass Effect universe, there is a lot of lore and history that needs to be conveyed to the player. A lot of it can be read in the game's codex, but not everyone is going to bother doing that, like me. Even though I love this franchise, I'm not really interested in reading this many lore entries. So there still needs to be a decent chunk of the backstory said by various characters in the game. And while Bioware did a very good job of making almost all the characters in the game feel real and fleshed out, some characters definitely feel more burdened here than others with this responsibility. I'm not going to go super in depth with the characters here, but I'll give a brief overview of them. Tally is a fan favorite character, but I would argue that's mostly because of how she was written in the next two games. Because in the first game, she's basically just a dispenser for knowledge on the Quarian race. That's not to say that she doesn't have a character, but out of all the companions, I feel like she improves the most in the sequels. Rex is probably the best companion in the game. An old, world-weary Krogan, a species of bloodthirsty warriors who became a threat to the galaxy after saving it from the Rachni, and who were plagued by a genophage which keeps their population in check. The two human companions, Ashley and Caden, are both kind of lackluster for me. Caden just seems a little too boring next to your other companions, while Ashley ranges from tolerable to unlikable for me. Garrus is our Turian companion, who doesn't really say much in the way of Turian lore. Similar to Liara, our only Asari companion, although she does give us a few tidbits of Asari knowledge. Garrus and Liara are adequately fleshed out here, although Liara does become attracted to Shepard very quickly. Which leads me to another big part of Mass Effect, the romances. Each game has a multitude of different romance options for Shepard, with the first game having three. Caden for a female Shepard, Ashley for a male Shepard, and Liara for either gender. And the game really wants you to romance someone. I didn't want to romance anyone from my first playthrough as a male Shepard, but somewhere along the way Ashley started saying things that made it seem like I had made romantic advances on her, and by the end she showed up in my room before the final mission like, well bang, bang okay. okay. Turns out, to avoid romancing her, you have to either be a complete dick to her the whole game, never talk to her the whole game, or make sure she dies in a certain mission. I wanted my first playthrough to be the way I usually play these games, which is a primarily Paragon Shepard, so I tried to be nice to everyone, but I guess that translated into I want to bang Ashley. It's a bit strange because for basically every other romance in the series, including in the first game, there's a very clear choice that you have to make to romance someone. Like in Liara's case, she will straight up ask Shepard whether or not they'd be interested in pursuing a relationship with her, but for whatever reason this wasn't the case with Ashley. Speaking of Paragon, Mass Effect has basically a sort of karma system where you can play as either a Paragon or Renegade Shepard or somewhere in between. Paragon is the lawful good option where Shepard becomes a shining beacon of the best humanity can offer, while Renegade is more of a bend the rules, be an asshole type of character. I wouldn't necessarily say that being a renegade means you're doing an evil playthrough, because you'll still end up being the hero in the end, but you're definitely more of an anti-hero if you go the renegade route. This was actually my first time ever going for a renegade playthrough, and it was kind of fun and cathartic even if I don't really want to do it again. Mass Effect is an action RPG, so there is a lot of dialogue and decisions to be made throughout the game. The different choices you can make do impact the game to varying degrees. Some choices can alter the game quite a bit, like whether or not you recruit a companion, what type of build your shepherd has, or if you let certain characters live or die. But most of the choices don't really have much of an impact on the game outside of the conversations you have with any given character. That's not to say that these choices are pointless per se, as a lot of conversations can be quite different depending on how you respond. Even if most of the time the overall contour and ending of the discussion doesn't ultimately change that much. The speech wheel the game employs for the dialogue system also has its own issues, like not always being very indicative of what Shepard will actually say. I mean, the game follows a basic rule that the dialogue option on the top right of the wheel will always be the Paragon option, the one in the middle will be neutral, and the one on the bottom right will be Renegade, so you 
always know which option to choose depending on how you want to respond. One of the issues I have with the Paragon and Renegade system is that the game really encourages you to pick either or instead of just picking whatever option seems right to you in the moment. Because the only way to pass certain speech checks is to have a high enough Paragon or Renegade score. But if you try and roleplay as a character that isn't strictly good or Renegade, it's quite possible that you'll miss out on some speech checks. I find that morality systems in games often seem like a good idea in theory, but I personally tend to prefer reputation systems like Fallout New Vegas has. Still, the Paragon and Renegade system is integral to the Mass Effect trilogy and I'm glad they kept it intact for the Legendary Edition, though I do hope they make some changes to it in the next game. Mass Effect is an action RPG with third-person shooting. The shooting in the game is kind of lackluster to be honest. Guns have very little feedback when fired, and they don't sound that powerful either, making the shooting feel kind of limp and unsatisfying for the most part. There are shotguns, pistols, snipers, and assault rifles, and while the original version of the game had certain guns be less effective depending on what class you chose, the Legendary Edition apparently makes each gun be effective no matter what class you have. Most guns can be modded with upgrades to improve them, and some of these mods can be very useful and effective. Overall though, the shooting has definitely been improved from the original, even if it still feels kind of janky. Along with choosing from two different background options for your character's story, which are your pre-service history, like whether you were born on Earth or on a colony, and your psychological profile, which determines if your character is a heroic soldier or a ruthless one, you also have to choose your combat class. You have six options. Soldier, Engineer, Adept, Infiltrator, Sentinel, and Vanguard. Each class is a mix of different weapon specializations, tech abilities, and biotic powers or lack thereof. The soldier class for instance has no biotic abilities but can specialize in all guns. I played the soldier class for my first playthrough, then vanguard for my second. Tech abilities include things like being able to hack enemies, overload their shields, or decrypt objects, i.e. open crates and shit. Biotic powers are essentially telekinetic abilities which allow you to fling enemies across the battlefield or freeze them in stasis. And while these abilities are cool, they don't really feel that good to use in combat, just like the guns. I've already begun playing through Mass Effect 2 and the entire combat experience is just better. It feels much more visceral and exciting than the combat in Mass Effect 1. Whenever I use a biotic ability in ME2, it's an immediate response and reaction and it feels good to use. But the first game seems to lack an immediacy and feedback from your powers. It's hard to describe but when you play the game it almost feels like you're not directly involved in the action to a certain degree, like the game is unable to fully immerse you in the battlefield. The game does have a cover system, but it doesn't work very well. Gears of War this is not. You can sprint up to enemies and melee them, which is no longer an automatic action like it was originally, but I found the melee to be finicky and unreliable. The enemy AI in the game is actually pretty decent and a lot of times quite aggressive. If you're not paying attention, you can die pretty easily. That's not to say that the game is that hard, because it isn't, but it's not a cakewalk either, at least on normal difficulty. There is a slight tactical aspect to the game where you can command your squad mates to go to specific locations and use their powers by bringing up the tactical wheel. Using your squad mates power is essential to be effective in combat, but I found that I never really had to manage where my squad mates went. So to sum up the combat, it's not terrible, it's completely serviceable for the game and this was also Bioware's first attempt at doing shooting mechanics, so it turned out better than it could have. But there's no denying that something definitely feels lacking with the combat overall. The other major thing you'll be doing in terms of gameplay is exploring the galaxy. There are many different different planets you can explore in the game, but they all more or less feel the same even if they look different. A large open area that you can drive the Mako around with a few points of interest to drive to. And the same can be said for many of the locations on said planets, which are copy and pasted interiors with slightly altered placements of objects from space to space. The Mako is the vehicle you get to drive while exploring the various planets. The Mako is infamous amongst the, the Mass Effect fanbase for how badly it controls. The remaster does improve the handling somewhat, but it's still doesn't handle very well. The physics were very floaty in the original games, making the Mako incredibly easy to flip over or on its side, and while the physics have been adjusted, it still is a little too easy to screw up when driving. Speaking of changes made, the Legendary Edition definitely doesn't shy away from tweaking parts of the game that needed adjusting. In the original game, whenever you failed the minigame to open a crate or something, you would not be able to attempt to open it again, you would have to spend Omni Gel to open it, but you are now able to attempt as many times as you want. You 
You were technically able to sprint outside of combat in the original version, but it didn't actually make you go faster. It just changed the camera for some reason. Now sprinting actually does make you move faster when you're not in combat. The Mako can move while being repaired now, which is so much better, and you can boost as well. The inventory capacity has been doubled, which is a great change even though I don't like the inventory management in Mass Effect. There are a bunch of side quests in the game, and a lot of them kind of suck. A lot of the side quests involve going to a planet that is functional the same as every other planet, going to a copy-pasted building and killing a bunch of enemies. This gets old long before the game is over. There are better side quests, which usually involve a moral quandary that needs to be solved, such as how to deal with a grieving widower who wants his wife's body returned to the family after she was killed in action, but her body could be used to research the weapons she was killed by and used to develop defensive measures to protect other soldiers against these weapons. These quests usually focus more on the dialogue system rather than combat or exploration. The Legendary Edition comes with all the DLC for each game. Well, almost every DLC. The first game is missing the Pinnacle Station DLC due to Bioware having lost the source code. Honestly though, if there was going to be a DLC not included in the remaster, Pinnacle Station is the one I would have chosen as it didn't really add much to the game in my opinion. Mass Effect is a great starting point for the series with a fantastic story, an interesting world, and great characters. The game falters with a lot of boring and repetitive side content and a combat system that isn't really as good as the sum of its parts. The game does hold up surprisingly well however, and the Legendary Edition is a great way to relive the Mass Effect experience or experience it for the first time. I'm going to give Mass Effect a 7.5 out of 10. I'm really excited to continue replaying the Mass Effect trilogy. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like, subscribing, and commenting your thoughts on the game. Thanks for watching.